uh, we got together uh, through the Strathmore uh, Artists in Residence Program, where I was a mentor one year, I guess a year before Chow was an artist in residence. And as it turned out, uh, she, she lived in my neighborhood. And uh, she said, you know, you should get together, and, and we should get together and play sometime. And I had no idea uh, how effortless uh, playing music with her would be. It's, it's, uh, it's been a very interesting uh, collaboration. I, she invited me to play on, on her program at Strathmore, which was a lot of, uh, it was all thorough composed Chinese music, right? And uh, we did, we, it went well, and we decided that in the process of that, that we were going to uh, devote this collaboration to entirely improvised music. And uh, so, so when we get together to rehearse, it, sometimes we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start with a word, uh, sometimes we'll start with a musical concept, like, uh, like trading, not necessarily trading in the sense of like jazz scores or eights or something like that, but just trading dialogues and, and uh, uh, the use of extreme dynamics and, and in, a, in a very conversational way. So, so as, as you watch us go through some of this craziness, you can, you can be aware of that. And briefly, Chow, why don't you just give them a little background on, on the instrument?
I think that the, the ability to like slide up and down into notes is 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 like the, the second thing that struck me when I started to play with Jack. When when she when she came over to my studio, the first the first thing I noticed, right, be, being a percussionist, you know, I, I'm interested in moving my hands around things and, and accurately and in rhythm, and and I was immediately struck with like how how much facility she had on the instrument. And then coupled with how much finesse that, uh, that I, I, w I was uh, trying to play around on the instrument. And, and I, I guarantee the strings are like looking really, really small. If you've ever, you know, if you've ever tried to play a marimba or a xylophone or vibraphone, think of something like that with, a, with about uh, one one hundredth the width. <laughs> and you, you, and you, can, you can see that the accuracy is, is very important. Uh, as, as she said, that, that draws very much from, uh, from the, the sand tour. So let, let's do something kind of in a, in a Middle Eastern vibe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out the, uh, the Darbuka that is, uh, th this one is from Egypt. And I'm going to play that in combination with the djembe drum from Africa that you don't usually see those combined too frequently. And, and maybe I'll even bring in the, uh, the Middle Eastern tambourine.
started off with uh, Jack Dijonet and, and then we went into semi Elvin Jones and then and then I borrowed a little bit from uh, Zakir Hussein and Nana Vesconcelos. So so it's it's interesting to me to uh, to just say like the world is our oyster in, in terms of sonic vocabulary, in terms of rhythms, and in terms of like all the nuance that, that Chow is able to get out of her instruments. And, and and it's all 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 percussion, you know. I, I mean that that is is, is something that, that is is very very compelling to me. The, uh, I'd like to. Are there are there any questions? I mean, this is a pretty unusual combination of instruments and, and kind of musical presentation. So we don't want to. I mean, we can just play all the time without stopping, as as you have seen. But but if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah. Trying to get her to break a string, you know. I'm, I'm doing my best. But <laughs> I like to know what uh, date does that instrument date back to? Date back to China? Yes. Um, I mean, 400 years ago. I, I'm going to to ask my husband how. So, do you tell me the dynasty of that time? It's probably the Ming Dynasty. It's it's uh, roughly. Centaur has been in China for a long time. It's, it's, um, the Centaur has uh, introduced to China in the early like 600s. And the, the Centaur is from the Middle East. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they, yeah. uh, during the Silk Road, we, the, all these instruments were exposed. They, they were really popular in the Tang Dynasty. It's roughly about
train where the in, in the bomb cases the, the skin. Uh, her case, she had more uh, rebound from the hemorrhage itself. W another another interesting kind of thing about about the collaboration, which really didn't occur to me until until we started talking about it, is uh, how the development of her instrument developed as as people traveled the Silk Road, right? And 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 so is the case with all of these instruments too. Uh, you know, all all of these tambourines have a legacy that could be found in China and Italy and all the places in between, especially the Middle East, which is which is my big influence. But but it, and 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 the way that they're kind of configured here, as well as the playing styles. You know, so uh, it, it's 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 fascinating now to 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 live in an era uh, where the Silk Road kind of information is happening, but it's being passed at lightning speed. Now, I've, I've got friends in Iraq and Saudi Arabia and, and all over the world, you know, via uh, Facebook and social media, and, and they're doing exactly the same kind of thing. This world fusion thing is now huge, and somebody can transfer information or a new idea, you know, they, they, can, they can work on it in their studio, Upload it and and somebody else can see it inside of ten minutes. So 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 it, it's interesting to 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 observe how all of these uh, transactions are, are going so fast now, and and they're also sometimes we we couple with with electronics, but we're not doing that. But it, it, in the, in this program, but but that is also now becoming a big part of 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 the tradition and the development of these instruments. So we've got, uh, we've got a little bit more. So one, one thing you notice that we, uh, we did is, is, is Chow plays on the side of her instrument with, with the mallet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I especially like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and, and we, we, we put to, we, we recorded a, just a little, a little background. We, we recorded a CD that's going to be out soon. And then in April, we're, we're going to be uh, providing the music for a Constellation Theater show, uh, The White Snake, which takes place in China. And we're playing uh, on the 28th at the Athenaeum in Old <coughs> But one of the pieces on our on our CD is called Rolling Walnuts uh, because it seems a little bit like walnuts are sort of rolling down <laughs> wooden stairs. So, maestro.
uh, just want to take you a little bit more, and thank you so much for, for coming out, and it, it's been such a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Chow to my UDC family, and, and we see, uh, it looks like the UDC family has expanded a little bit out there in the audience, so th thank you very much for coming out, and uh, we have no idea what this is going to be, what the next thing is we're going to play, but we'll all discover it at the same time. Maybe I'll bring out that dog whistle.
Thank you.